It is Wonga Sunday. Sometimes your neighbor tell them we dance the Wonga way. I talk to your neighbor. Zeno Kutan. Zeno, Zeno Kutan. Let me see you turn and tell them we dance the Wonga way. Say that. Let's go. Let me see you turn. Ay, ay, ay.
and above na deep hits because if you dance like this you're going to break now you need to break and remake and then you continue dancing amen come on celebrate Jesus one more time in this place so uh, in the beginning of this year okay for those who don't know we are celebrating our one year of existence in Mwanga God has been so so faithful. He's been so so good. And in the beginning of this year, Pastor George gave us a word for establishment. And it was coming from the book of Isaiah. So in Monga we twang. So Isaiah. Uh-huh. Chapter. <laughs> Chapter 2. And uh, it, the word was establishment. And Pastor Ben again came and told us as Mwanga, as we begin this year, the word that he had for us was if the Lord does not walk with us. We're not moving from here. And that's posed to me as a, as a challenge of just being fully dependent on God. And just not, not worrying and just risking it all. Pastor Ben has preached about risking it. I don't want to spoil. I don't want to be a spoiler. But let me tell you something. The moment you risk it all, that's when the Lord begins to use you in mighty ways. And this morning, I want us to lift up our worship of dependency to God. This morning, I want us to lift, lift up our worship of surrenderly. Hey! Niliwambia. I said my name is Nyawela. Eh? <laughs> so if I, if, I, if I slide, you understand, all right? All right, so this morning we want to surrender. Say surrender, surrender to the Lord. So just lift up our worship in this place and surrender your lives to the Lord this morning. Surrender your career, your, your work, your families, your relationships to the Lord because we cannot be able to do it without Him this morning. Come on, lift up our worship in this place. Lift up our worship in this place. Jesus, we call unto you this morning. Because we cannot be able to do it without you, O oh God. We depend fully on you, O oh God. Because you are our strength, O oh God. Your word tells us, O oh God, that the righteous run to you and they are safe, O oh God. This day we run to you, O oh Jesus. And we call you over to come and save us. Because we cannot be able to do it on our own. Come on, just surrender your life unto Jesus this morning. For your word tells us, O oh God, that unless if a builder builds without you, they build in vain, oh God. This morning we don't want to start without you. We don't want to start our second year without you, Lord. We want to start it with you, oh God. For you to surround us, oh God. Because as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so does you, oh Lord, surround us, oh Jesus. This morning we call out to you, oh Jesus. To walk with us, oh God. Come on, lift up our worship at this place, city lighters. Lift up our worship of dependency to the Lord. Bwana wewe ni ngome yangu Pia mwanga wa wokovu wangu Nisimamishe juu ya neno lako Niangazie uso wako Na kuitaji mercy
That you're holding on to could it be that they, they there is a way that you're just putting up guard yani? you're just putting up fences and the Lord is telling you today that as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem so as the Lord surround us today and when the Lord has surrounded you you don't need all those fences that you're putting up today you don't need to protect yourself when the Lord is protecting you this morning so just go ahead and just surrender it all to Jesus and allow him to walk with you allow him to go before you to be beside you to be behind you this morning come on just let it go this morning let let that one thing go could it be finances that you're letting them limit you from just achieving your full potential this morning the lord is speaking to you and he's telling you to let it all down because those who trust in the lord are like mount zion that cannot be shaken this morning i ask you to trust in the lord Trust in the Lord, my sister. Trust in the Lord this morning and give him full control of your life. Come on, let me hear you. Let me see you give God control in this day. Let me see you, your life change from today. That you're going to give the Lord control. Come on, lift up our worship in this place. Lift up our worship to delight us. Surrender to the Lord this morning. Oh. Lord, we have gathered, you have given us our words. 
you have increased our numbers daily, my God. Your presence has been evident in that place, Jehovah God. That in your presence there is fullness of joy, my God. And so, Lord, today we just lift our worship of thanksgiving, saying, Thank you, O God. Thank you for that which you have done for the past one year, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the growth. We thank you for the increase, Lord. We thank you for every life that has been transformed. We thank you for the salvation that you have brought, O God, among us, your children, O God. Father, this morning we thank you, O God. We thank you that you have increased us, Lord. You have increased our programs, Lord. Indeed, Lord, you are good. You are good and your doing is marvelous in our eyes. And so this morning, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that which you have done, that which you are doing, and that which you will continue to do. We thank you, Lord, even for the next level that you are taking us, oh God. For your word says that your grace takes us from glory to glory. And even, Lord, as we step into this new year, we pray that your presence will continually be with us, oh God. And that which you have done for Mwanga, I pray that may it flow into everybody in this place, Lord. That may the same grace flow among us to your people, Jehovah God. That King Jesus, that people will begin to experience increase in their lives. They will begin to experience growth in their lives. They will begin to receive help from men in every corner in the name of Jesus. That, Father, may your grace flow amongst your people this morning. That, Jehovah God, may they receive help from you this morning. Father, we thank you, O oh God. I pray, Jehovah God, for the people here that where there is hope, Lord, where there is discouragement, Lord, that you may restore hope once more. That where there is discouragement, Lord, and despair, I pray that they will put on the garment of praise, O oh God. The Lord, you will continue to lift up your people, Jehovah God, into levels they have never imagined. For it is you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And so today, may your grace be evident in this place. May your presence fill this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your good. And your mercies do endure forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's welcome our children. We pray. Celebrate the children as they come. Father, we thank you for these young ones, O oh God, that even as they go to class, we pray that you may fill them with your spirit, that they may be ten times better than their peers, that they will be fertile soil, Jehovah God, that whatever they learn shall bear fruit within, O oh God. I pray for their teachers and that you may continually fill them with your spirit and wisdom, give them grace, give them patience, give them strength for these little ones. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You. Praise Jesus, City Lighters. Allah, praise Jesus, City Lighters. Hey, I'm talking to Chayil. Go up in there. Surely, Kunai Kunai Lake. Go after. So, so, praise Jesus, City Lighters Church. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Welcome to Mwanga service. This is our first anniversary. But before I go into detail, say hi to your neighbor. Maybe I'm John Anata. Limpata Apaki, praise the Lord. Say hi to them. Ulize kama walivaki jenzi ama mama tu. Imekata kutoka. Anyway, the theme ilikuwa unavaki jenzi, ki alpha. Wengine wakona suti ya adi koti shuali. Eh? Elda mumo, maji. Kwa kupata memo, hata viatu sugeva sneakers. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, anyway. I'm saying, I'm saying, you're not saying hi to your neighbor. Mekata. You know I can see you from here. Kuna light. Say hi to your neighbor, please, upstairs. Overflow. The seat will make sure they are saying hi to their neighbors. Now, I'm ever kijenzi. Come on, Javai. Yes, due to it, I'm kidogo. Tony, what's happening? And your importance, ni 
Atat, Gen Z, who knows? You have a Gen Z in your home. Yani kuna ka extensions, indio? Aya, thank you so much. You can take your lovely seats. Mesimama sana. Kulikuwa na katizi. Mwona, holy, holy, wengine. Hey, I was seated with one pastor. I'll not mention the name. Like, in... <laughs> I was just praising the Lord. Nika sikia, we? Nika nini na happen, Pastor Mushiri? Ako, hey, ndangu kanda. <laughs> Did I mention the name? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Aka nyambia. <laughs> Karibu anguke. Those styles. Anyway, ni gym. Kama wenda ni gym, free gym at Mwanga service. So people are asking Mwanga ni nini, Mwanga service. So it is our City Lighters teen and youth service. Teen meaning from 13, kuenda hadi youth, 35, eh, hey, yako ni old. Si usame hata basi 28 hapo. 30 kingia, we kuja church, usikazane uko juu. You know, hey, just please, kuja to church. He prays here. Hata hapa kuna youthfulness. There's a lot of youths, indio? Yeah, yeah. So um, we fellowship upstairs. Previously, to Likua screen two, we started like 20, ama maybe even less, but the Lord has helped us grow immensely, and we are grateful because Sasa, to kwa overflow, ya uko jutu kona di tent, and the Lord blessed us with drum sets, the Lord blessed us with, ya ni tukona everything, by the way, and the Lord has really blessed us. Our lead pastor is Pastor Ben Karaoke and the lovely wife, Joanne Wanjiru Njiru. Aha. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, my coffee, come on, I'm to upon the phone, okay? Surely. Shika hii mambo haraka haraka sana. Aya sawa sawa. So in the first service when you we played an amazing amazing job, amazing game. But leo sasa second service, we have to switch up things because after the word we had from Pastor Ben I'll not spoil. Nikasema you know what? Acha confidence in gear. Sasa so Ashas, so just give me two volunteers or upstairs. The seat oh, remember I told you I need volunteers. Wa overflow. I hope wako. Yes, yes, yes. Hapa downstairs, Nicole, give me two volunteers. Na mimi will volunteer the elders. The elders na joa ata di volunteer, I will volunteer them. So let me see who we have. Ntapata nani. Elder, chairman, elder Mwesh, nilikuwana mahali umehepa. But please, come through, come through. Anyone can please look for elder Mwesh because we not start without him. Our chairman. Thank you, thank you so much. And we have our lovely representative. Hmm. Chanyone nani nita chagua hapa. We of course will have to do male and female because I, you know, important. <laughs> Balance. Of course I'll not even call the wife. Sasa, naju itakuwa yungu nangaliona even. It's just a small competition. The best part is the good is that in fact this is how we run Mwanga. Si hati nimekuja na ju concept mpia hapa. No, 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 no. This is how our service are run. Sawa, sawa. We have some goodies for the people who will come. So please volunteer yourself. Wambi wakuje. Shua, liyama ni wanze kwa ita. Kwa because I know half of the congregation rapper <laughs> lying. Anyway, so um, <laughs> the other one, Ita Ita. Rataka ah. <laughs> lady, volunteer yourself before I volunteer you. <laughs> volunteer yourself before I volunteer you. Ah, nimekumbuka the one who is never on the spotlight. Um, our lead Asha. Ah, Helen, Helen, Helen. Tunataka Helen hapa. <laughs> Elder Mwesh, na Helen, how that lived a foot. Ah, yeah. They sit on many parts here too. We don't have time to waste. Ah, uh, Pastor, Pastor Ben, I chukua one hour thirty minutes. Na 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 Malaysia, I'm sure. I'm gonna hold someone. Three part series, Tafadali. Give me two. Ah, uh, we have one. Kujani Karibiani. Hey, na metoke a lick dancers. These are the co- this is the confidence I put in my people. <laughs> Karib- <laughs> Karibuni, Karibuni. We have two downstairs, upstairs, two. So- Ah, uh, wow, upstairs. Ah, uh, posa, you copy the lady ju. I'm not going to I'm a Mauna. I'm going to put you in a moja. Are you? Uta pata, uta pata. Another one. Oh, you knew upstairs. From upstairs? Ah, uh, good, good. I need you to partner up with your. Eh, hey, I'm going to You knew. Hey! Good, good. I am um, Elder Mwesh and Helen. Surely. Mdatu, you see how I will be. I need people from Overflow. I need people from Overflow. <laughs> I uh, <coughs> ask in Elder Mwesh, ah, nice, nice. You are from Overflow? Upstairs. Eh, boom, nyambie. Nini metoka wapi? Overflow, I'm upstairs. Ata nini upstairs? Aya nipe moja basi Overflow. Ah, Elder Mwesh, give it up for Elder Mwesh. <laughs> yeah, Ted, Ted. Ted, Asha Ted, I need one, one person wa overflow. Everyone has to do this. Nana Juam na nyona kwa screen. Msifani nitoke hapa ni watafte uko. Nitoke na kamera hivi. Please, 
Volunteer yourself. I am Helen, Helen, Elder Moesha Mejitokeza, the chairman himself. Ata wewe jitokeza, tawadha. Thank you. And one more person. I'm a Desito Meji volunteer. Des, Desito. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good, good. Ah, okay. Nikapul. Oh, so I want your overflow. I am Matthews. It a bit of balance. Where is Matthews? I'm here, Patena. I am good. So we have um, overflow. Good to have you. Elder Moesh, Karibia Pona Chichambona. Come up, up at the center of it all. You just here at the center. Up, up, and the tractor. Helen, surely you'll do this to your whole team, Ashari. Tawadali, come. Please come here. Elder Moesh, please come here. We have two, two. My dear, come. Don't worry, I'll give you a partner. So, so. You'll not be alone because I need us to work in twos. We work in twos. Um, Pastor Eno, good to see you. Please come. Pastor Eno. Hey, hey, Karibu. Hey. <laughs> thank you. Just, just stand there. Thank you. Thank you. So, Imambo Nirahisi, I'll not start without Elder Helen. So, What you are going to do, they are going to play. Our guests today have been married for two months. God bless you, Salimia. Iko kiti ya mana kwa anzi. Yes. Ikuna kiti ya mana. Najua ni nini, wacha wone. Kila kitu ni mpia, mpaka jamana kungwa mlango. Masi, you are telling me, ulienda house riding the first time with another person. Na muambia nini? Ibuera makeup tower. Kirambo. <laughs> Explore Africa's inspiring legends. Stories of courage, resilience, and the indomitable African spirit. Do I think, as far as Africa is concerned, music cannot be for enjoyment. Music has to be for revolution. What was really important was payback time to nature. The environment is every day issue. It's the air we breathe. It's the water we drink. It's the food we eat. And we can't live without these things. Faces of Africa on TV 47. This part okay, so that we want to have mm -hmm. the elephant standing on its own, right? So we have to remove mm -hmm. all this excess clay from the middle, from the middle part of the elephant. This week, we're going to be concentrating on skills hand skills as a business. It's just to find a gap you have to fill in the society. Okay, the guy is looking for something that's unique, something you can have an attachment to. Art is something that I would advise for someone to pursue and. It's just more like you need to know where the market is and target what um, you need to achieve. How exactly are people earning from this particular sector? I have told you I learn a, a clothes manufacturing business. Finding tailors is a big problem and I'm telling you they earn very well. This Monday at 7.30 p.m. on The Grind. Join us as we go beyond stereotypes and dive into uplifting stories that redefine limits. I always tell people I believe it's worse being in a broken home than having no arms and no legs. Uh -huh. But when you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. But that's not all. We also bring you valuable insights into mental health issues with expert guidance. When one is going through a hardship, and especially this one now, economic hardship, it impacts uh, 
uh, negatively on the mental health. Even the children should be aware. Mm -hmm. Let the children know that what your, the father is going through, such that they also don't beat him too hard on asking for things that he's unable to provide. Challenges bring people together. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the worst coping skills is starting to drink or feel, feeling helpless, you know, yeah. and, and sleeplessness. Just normalize the situation. Beyond the Limits, every Saturday at 8 p.m. Saul and lay his hands on him so that he may regain his sight back. Hey, mna kumbuka kituka iyo. Aya, aya. I ni likuwa ni mesema first time. Apa na, apa na. Kaja, kaja, kaja. Aya number four, number four. Who helped Ethiopian eunuchy to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah? Who helped the Ethiopian eunuchy to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah? You're very easy. It's in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 29 to 31. I need the name of the person. Sawa, sawa. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This one I said it in first service. So come on, first service. This is just a bonus. Nikwani meuliza pale kina pasa ndanu, nikauliza nyawera pale na jigs. Aya, this is very easy. Who was the grandmother of Timothy? Who was the grandmother of Timothy, guys? Rahisi sana, rahisi sana, rahisi. Aya, number six, we have four more to go. Number six, who was, who was Ruth's sister-in-law? Ruth alikuwa na sister-in-law. Jina yake ilikuwa nani? Ruth. Ula Boaz alikuwa na sister-in-law mwenye alihepa. Jina yake ni gani? Aha, aha, aha. Good, 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 good. Iapa, another easy one, number seven. Silence, please. Number seven. Yeah? Number six. Ujaske yo, pastor, you know? Oh, so sorry, so sorry. Uh, who was Ruth's sister-in-law? Ule Ruth wa Boaz. Have you found your Ruth, my dear? No? No? <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, yeah, number, number seven, number seven, number seven. Aha, nice. You're doing good? Mkosawa? Agu. Eh, hey, msangali answers. Surely. Number seven. In the sermon on the mountain, in the sermon on the, on the mountain, Jesus said, said this, shall, said who? Who are these people that Jesus said? They shall be called the children of God. In the sermon of the mountain. Sasa si muandike answer. Lakini yo, aki elder Mwesh is not that one. It's after the right answer. Mesh out the wrong one. Just please, it's after the right answer. In the sermon on the mountain, who did Jesus say shall be called the children of God? Children of God. You're in Matthew 5. You're someone of the mountain. Kuna kale kawimbo. I'm here. You're in Bo. Nani ya kwanza. Sasi yezi sema. Anyway, anyway. So um, let's go. Number eight. We are almost done. What are the books that come before and after Daniel? What are the book? What is the book that comes before Daniel? And what book comes after Daniel? Sindio. Kuna book kayo by the Bible. But sasa. Nigani likuja before. Nagani after. Sawa, sawa. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Eternal Evil, Sasa, Nezasema, before and after. Natakaya before na after. Daniel, Daniel. I am number nine, number nine, we are almost done. What insect did John the Baptist eat in the wilderness? What insect? I didn't want to be an insect. I didn't want to be an insect. I didn't want to be a breakdown. You know, what insect did John the Baptist eat in the wilderness? You can shout and say, you can't get any water. Surely, number one. Anyway, I, uh, number 10, the last one. Number 10, the last one. And we're in that season. So I thought it was important. Nyeke kaka swali kwa that season. Mteleo ni season gani? Sawa, sawa. Aya, which biblical story is associated with Palm Sunday? Which biblical story is associated with Palm Sunday? Unona hiyo Palm Sunday? Ata sita wambia shuali. Palm Sunday, I'm doing. Na kuna wale walikuwa, anyway, sawa, sawa. Walikuwa na beba hizo miti. Anyway, which biblical story is associated with Palm Sunday? And then a bonus. This is bonus, number 11 bonus that I need you all to tell me. Our church is called City Lighters. 
uh, in fact ni Mungu amenipatia ndio tujue ka this as it lighters or not unajua ingine aiza kufanya anyway this question is the bonus number 11 is city lighters chas ndio and what book verse chapter and verse is do we find that that verse yeah we are the light of the cities of the world aha uh-huh, aha uh-huh. i need the book i need the chapter and i need the verse sawa sawa are we done memaliza memaliza ah thank you thank you i ani patieni ni patieni the thing is ah eh number 1 sipole champes aha aha ni patieni and the trick is when i tell you mnipatie mkatae mtakuwa disqualified so when i come to you ni patieni otherwise mtaka hapo makbure sawa when i tell you give me mnipatie aya thank you for understanding mmesema mko disqualified thank you so much hawa ni giants hawa walikuwa hey Hey Champes you are still writing and of you know you know when you write you will just be disqualified mm? thank you thank you and yes our ni igniters eh mko na blanks mingi anyway so what we'll do i'll give you you mark for each other mseme ni aramu what 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 ndawapatia ya champes because i trust that you'll write, you will give them you still at champions you tia man ni nini hapana just mark correctly sawa sawa mark eka nunge kama ni nunge sawa sawa aya aya giants ni ndo giants i'll give you overcomers because you know as giants you overcome ma na mimi nitakupatia giants because you are champions you've already won aya sawa sawa are you are alphas da upatia igniters yeah in close close there are so many blanks but just mark so i and also da pair alphas you guys guys don't know hapo kona i let's start let's start number 1 uh, we can all answer come na you answer sawa sawa who pretended to be mad to avoid being captured and dying the david you guys must king david ama david mark number 2 who heard peter's voice at the door but failed to let him in Champes, Champes. I see you winning. Roda, Roda is the name. See Rod. I'm going to get Roda. He's going to R H O D. I can't get Rod. It's doing me X. So, and I forgot to get a spelling. Surely. Anyway, anyway. So, number three, number three. What was the name of the disciple at Damascus who was told to find Saul? I love all his hands. Ananias. Fire. I see. I'm going to get Ananias. I'm going to get shop. Ananias you like Ananias I get Ananias up yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you and uh, number 4 who helped the Ethiopian eunuch to understand a portion of the book of Isaiah Philip thank you see Philippians si ju nini Philip to period sawa sawa thank you and uh, number 5 we can all shout who was the grandmother of Timothy Thank you thank you Lois not Eunice as most of you mliandika naona your eyes yeah yeah it was Lois hallelujah yeah yeah thank you thank you who i need to know if pastor eno kwalipata hii who oh sorry the grandmother ilikuwa grandmother nani you are Lois too bado yeah see Eunice <laughs> i need to know if pastor eno kwalipata hii aliniambia nirudie who was Ruth's sister in law is it opa Opa, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am in the sermon of the mountain. Who did Jesus say shall be called the children of God? Peacemaker. Ah, you champions are coming. Good, good, the peacemakers. Yeah, yeah, called peacemakers. You will be sad. Kuna kamimo na za India, lakini boy si mekata. Anyway, number 8, number 8. What are the books that come before and after after Daniel? Now, before ni? Before ni? After ni Thank you thank you thank you so much guys aha so anaanza Ezekiel osia asianze osia Ezekiel ifuatane hivyo mbona aanze na yenye si nilikwambia uanze na gani before and after hata akikuwa na the right hand ampe half a mark half a mark anyway so number 9 what insect did John the Baptist eat cause hapa kina hata nani walisema loudly say it loudly in the wilderness locust thank you thank you which biblical story is associated with the Palm Sunday. Thank you triumphant entry. Aya, the last one. Surely nataka kujua nani wali fail. City lighters. You are the light, the cities of the world. Please tell me loudly which book? Start just with the book. Matthew. Matthew chapter Ah nice nice please tali haraka haraka hapa nafukuzwa just tali 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 haraka haraka tali tali thank you tali tali kama kuna half anika 0.5 0.5 unajua 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, Tali, Tali, uh-huh, I'm sure Maliza, you're very fast to back, like you can't be the first to finish. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's see, let's see. Guys, you have to have me 10 out of 10. Okay, I take 11 out of 10, Basi. Anyway, we have Champez. Hey, one. Uh, let's see, we have Champez. They have eight and a half. Champez. <laughs> Over 11. Good, good job, good job. Overcomers, ni kina nani? <laughs> Who are the overcomers? <laughs> Nini? Ah, ni awa. Overflow. Ita bidim ko mna kujama pema. <laughs> because, <laughs> because hapa, hapa. We have one out of out of shikeni si esema. Shika, shika to badali. One. In fact, you know, the trick is just come early. Kujo kaya apa. Apa no wisdom. Ata si lazima usome wad. There's just wisdom oozing here. One is, yeah. Ata chwezi wa two mames of Potomia ama Israel. They can't send them anywhere. Ah, yeah, igniters. Ah, my dears. You know, to make what you Bible studies every Friday, Na ata moja na mwananga so I wonder nia nafanyanga you know <laughs> because I'm a decide I'm a decide kuni patia four shikeni four ah no 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 four it's ah tovali namnione ah alphas alphas quick coming in very fast close to eh hey, pasta I know you have tried seven and a half nine half ni gani mepewa. City lighters. City lighters. Vasa ukuna jua ni 14. Ebu, ebu, let me see if you got that one first. <laughs> Matthew 2. <laughs> I cannot with you. And of course we have, <laughs> we have number one. These ones are number one for sure. Because we have seven and a half. We have seven, eight and a half. And the giants. We are nine. Awesome. All right, all right, all right. Mr. Jalim, call number two, Basi. Sawa, hey. Meshka, I'm going to break your tie. Okay, we're going to nine. Ini, nini, mendi, kapat. Jesus, Jesus, we're entering to you. I wanted to, the triumphant entry. I needed the triumphant entry, my dear. Sawa, sawa. Aya, we have number one. Number one, giant. Upper sawa. Aya, na manishata upstairs. Why did Africa overflow the joint? But um, upstairs. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And now because now nani kama nezendo kwa muange po asindi, eh? Because you know them kwa single, meva the same, you know. Eh? She can eat chocolate, mkule pa moja, alungi na kiwangalia. So yeah, but you can share, you can share. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Aha, nilisikia elder mwesh tu ya kulangi chocolate, siju tu ya kula hii ama. Anyway, number twos, ah, good, mefanya poa, iyo maku siku ibiwa, mejaribu, kusababu I wanted the triumphant entry. Iyo Jesus entering, it's very long, hata iyo mgeacha tu hapo. <laughs> but thank you so much, you have not disappointed the elders, good job, good job. <laughs> And of course, of course, number three, Mkwa Api, Pastor Enoch. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, my dear. No, no, I'm going to talk about chocolate. And by faith, it happens. Cindy, yeah, go and get yourself some milk and cookies and make sure you can eat more than, because he says he doesn't eat. Yeah, you can. But anyway, he will eat also. So, so, you guys, just, I need you here. Totally too. Just come. Hapa ni meteseka sana. I just need one more. Ni jua nani for real ni hajui kabisa. Just one question. <laughs> just one. Yani, I, I give them a chance. Yani, nani toke hapa. I just need to give you a chance. And I'm going to ask one question. One question to upstairs. Good, good job, good job. I have one question. The people will shout the answer correctly faster. 
can walk with half my chocolate. Apa chocolate? Ni half. Because I'm going to have one for half. So I pay your ten. Aya, and maybe in Kiguzwa, Sada, and Tuneza, Neza, Pia, Yote, Sawa. Aya, this question is very easy. You answer loudly. Sawa, loudly. So, Apo mta lose to. Nata kuandika? Apa, nataka mshout, no. Nani ndo si hajui kabisa. You know, we have to know nani hawa wili shuali hata. Seriously. Anyway, this is the question. This is the question. This is the question. Aha. Hey, asa mina wanankani wapera hisi. Anyway, sawa, sawa. Who? Uh-uh. On what island was Paul? Okay, I'm going to say, Mom, I'm Sawa, sawa. Aya, ini rahisi na ntawapia answers. Mbili, mnipeyo ya mwisho. Adam and Eve had three sons. Uh-huh. Of course, we know Cain, we know Abel. Who was the other son? Eh? Say, thank you, thank you. Mlijua. Mlijua kwa kweli ntawa, ntawa ibisha. Thank you so much, guys. I chocolate in the pay after you appear, Msomo. Tokeni, tokeni. Thank you so much, guys. Overflow, make sure. Next time, I'm going to go Sawa, sawa. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, <laughs> that is... That is basically how we lead Mwanga and why sometimes no die mbona mnafanya trivia ni nini it helps us such that hata uki lose you want to go and read the bible you want to go and read the word hata sometimes maybe kuna international bible trivia tunaweza kutuma wewe ama si ndio una represent city lighter sawa sawa anyway i'm kedop also um, we started our vuka program that is Excans come Malza High School. Pale, we started our first session on Thursday. If you still are able to register, to me answer to this Thursday. Tadali kawani excan, you know a sister, brother, atan cousin, basi, cause nephew have a stick dog. Anyway, nephew na niece, Cindy. I'm a grandson. Eh, hey, grand mneza kwa. Hey, hey. Wako, grand. Eh, hey, please, walete, tunakwanga upper screen too. Every Thursday from akuja from one to four, five. Now, guys, thank you for this opportunity. Let me welcome our lead pastor, City Lighters, Reverend George Macharia. Namsimame, Safadali. Msimame, please, please, please. Who will welcome our lead pastor, Pastor Ben? But thank you so much. Next time it might be you coming out of here with a chocolate <laughs> or not. <laughs> thank you. A round of applause for our lead pastor, Reverend George Macharia. Put our hands together for Kate Dope. Hallelujah. Make sure that you follow her on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, and on TikTok, she has some amazing stuff, content there. Please high five a neighbor and tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I uh, Talk to them and tell them it's Mwanga Sunday. Uh, for those of us who are watching us online and on TV 47, uh, Mwanga is our youth ministry here at City Lighters Church, and they're going to be leading our service. They've been leading our service, of course, all the way from morning till now, and we thank the Lord for them. Let's appreciate Mwanga team. And uh, I want to, at this particular time, I want to cordially invite and welcome our TV audience, those of us who are watching us from TV 47, we want to welcome you into this service. Today, it's Mwanga Sunday. Mwanga is our youth uh, ministry here at City Lighters Church, and you can see it's, it's amazing, it's fun, and it's a place to be in Jesus' mighty name. So I want you to invite all your young people to come, those of us who are in high school, those of us who are in the university, and even below that, uh, we want to invite you to come to our Mwanga service. It's amazing. Starts from 9, goes all the way up to 11 in Jesus' mighty name. Those of us who are watching us from abroad and from our YouTube channel, from all platforms, we want to welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. Let's welcome our TV audience. Uh, is that how we welcome our TV audience, really? City Lighters Church. Amen. And as we are standing like that, uh, there is a man that we tasked with the mandate to lead our young people. Been doing a fantastic, fantastic job. Him and his wife, they've uh, led the team so well. They have a huge, huge team at Mwanga. And as we are standing like that, I'd like to invite none other than Pastor Ben and Pastor Wanjiro to come. Uh, come on, let's appreciate these two. Let's appreciate them. 
We launched off Mwanga last year and now it's one year later. Hallelujah. They've been growing, they've been increasing, they've been starting new programs and we bless the Lord for them in Jesus mighty name. Amen. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1. Look at what, what does it say? What does it say quickly? 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1 and verse number 1. We're going to go up all the way up to 3, up to 3. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, I'm sure even in Mwanga Sunday you can find scriptures. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Timothy, because I want to show you what these men have become. Hallelujah. And they are best described by scripture in Jesus' mighty name. What does it say? Want to go? You, you then, then, my son. son. Shh. You have to be a? Uh, talk to a neighbor who is looking a bit conflicted and tell them, a hey, neighbor, you have to be a son. Which son are we talking about? This is Timothy, whose grandmother was? And his mother was called who? Yeah, look at a neighbor who is, and kama onge onge mwambie, truly you are not a son. Kama ujui hiyo. Hallelujah. Uh, what, what does it say? I want, want to go again? You, you then, then, my son. son. What do you do? Be, Be strong, strong in, in the, the grace, grace that is in Christ Jesus. So our grace does not come from anywhere else. It comes from Jesus Christ. It is activated by men when they lay their hands on you, but the grace comes from God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's why when Timothy is being talked to in chapter number four, what does it say? When you received the grace of God, when the elders did what? Laid their hands upon you. What happens thereafter? Listen to this. Uh -huh. Verse number two. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses uh -huh. and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. What do you do? You, whatever you have learned, what do you do? You, you entrust it to reliable people who will also be qualified to do what? To teach others. And that's what this couple is in Jesus' mighty name. This man, I've worked with him when I was still a youth pastor. He would come and see me, and never, I can never forget, he would come every week to see me on a particular date. He would come on Wednesday in the morning. And every Wednesday in the morning, we would spend time with him the whole day. He would go back home in the evening. I was in my 20s. Believe you me, I'm not in my 20s anymore. Buenas <laughs> you so when you see me entrusting him, it's because of what that scripture says, that I have entrusted some things on him, and now he is what? Qualified. What is he? Now, now, talk to a neighbor and tell the neighbor, neighbor, it is not unique to any person. It is just your faithfulness in becoming a son or a daughter in this house. You see, they're not even saying that one. Uh, verse number three, the, uh, verse number three, which is the last one, the last one. Look at this. What does it say? Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So it's not just in good times, but also in what? Uh, oh, you, you don't believe that you will suffer in this. Huh? Uh, the Bible says in this world, there is what? Many, many sufferings. But be of good cheer because I have done what? Overcome. Hallelujah. And so if our God overcame the suffering, you too you shall overcome. You too you shall overcome in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us qualified men to teach us. We are ready to sit under your feet to hear what you have to say to us this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. As your servants teach us, um, uh, uh, Pastor Ben and Wanjiro teach us this afternoon, we are praying that Jehovah God, that the word will bear fruit in our lives in the name that's above every other name. And so Jehovah God, let everything that works on this altar work on him in Jesus' mighty name. Let the divine revelation that comes, Heavenly Father, come unto him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a flow, let there be an overflow 
of revelation and insight and knowledge, O oh God, even as he teaches us this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless uh, 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 his lips, O oh God, and we decree and declare there will be eloquence of speech and clarity of thought, even as they teach us today in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. Ben is going to tell us my life. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together again for Ben and Wanjiro. Thank you so much, Pastor George. Praise Jesus, church. Yeah. I'm married to one wife, <laughs> and she's going to say hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for celebrating with us. Uh, Mwanga at one. We meet every Sunday at upstairs at the foyer, so we look forward to seeing all you faces there. Young faces. Wapi makofi bibi yangu. Oh, nafa kumfikisha. Guys, I'm from Muranga. I keep telling you, lower the expectations. <laughs> now say it with me, and my life will never, ever be the same again. Now repeat it with some words and some finality. And my life will never, ever be the same again. Testify to your neighbor, prophesy, tell them something that made you smile last week as you, had, as you take your seats. They've told you something nice. May what has been prophesied to you come to pass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can have your seats, guys. Can I have your blessed seats? Have you guys enjoyed the activities that were led by Kate Dove? Yeah? My brother Matthews Alitoroka. You know, Matthews is, is one of the, he's a very powerful minister. He preaches to the world through his fashion sense. Matthews matches his blazer and his socks and loose covers. <laughs> it's a powerful man of God. <laughs> now, Today we are turning one as Mwanga, and we are just so happy. And I'm going to invite uh, three people who are going to come give testimonials. We're supposed to do the whole team, but time is So I'm going to invite uh, Faith, uh, Reina, and Irene to step up on stage so that they can share how it's been for them. Let's give them a round of applause. Please rush to the stage. Where are the rest? Oh yeah, yeah, karibuni sana. So you can you can start. Um, you know this will determine a lot if you guys will go for the next hangout or not. So let me hear what you have to say. Uh, Karibu. Praise God, Church. Amen. Uh, my name is Faith. Um, uh, Nilianza Mwanga. Actually, I was invited by Raina. It was a hangout, and it was so cool. I thank God for that. Uh, after joining the hangout, upon don kuja ku realize that there's more to learn in the church. No, no, it's not more about kukuja service, na kuka hapa. Uh, I interacted with my friends, I le- uh, nili kuja kuja like, uh, when you are a teen, like the Bible says, serve the Lord when you are young, no, no, before you get old, you know, and, uh, so far, so good. Uh, I'm blessed. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Pastor Ben and Pastor Enoch. They've been so great in our lives. Like, to me, learn a lot, Nona. And uh, he, <laughs> like he thank God. He thank God. Nice. Be blessed, church. Asante sana. Pass, pass it over. Okay, praise God. Amen. Uh, I'm Irene, and I'm from Wanga. And first, I'd like to say, like, since I joined Mwanga, the spiritual growth, and I've been able to cultivate spiritual discipline, like reading the word of God. I know it's hard, but we try. And also meditating upon the word of God, and also praying for others. I, I mean, ita kukos to kiombem to mwingine. The second thing is the moral support that is there. We are blessed so much to have Pastor Ben and Ranjiru there. And we are so much blessed. Ata Nyawera was there. I don't know why. He le- she left. She got but... old. She got old. <laughs> <laughs> but we thank God for everyone that is there that has to offer us the moral support and 
they're there to encourage us and we thank God for that. And yeah, that's all I have thank to you. say. Thank you so much, Irene. Reina. <laughs> Praise God. I'm Reina. Wow. Munako anga wengi. Wow, okay. Um Mine is a little bit long. So uh, oh. when I joined... <laughs> you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> when I joined City Lighters, um, I was introduced to City Lighters by my amazing cousin. She's called Kezia. Um, when I was in high school, I used to study in a Muslim school, which was amazing. It was called Tesla School. But because I'm a Christian in a Muslim school, my Christianity spiritual strength was very weak. And when I joined City Lighters, um, I, w- I directly went to Mwanga, and they were so welcoming. They had a lot of things. The competition, I couldn't even think of why win. So, um, my friends, they are, I can comment them. That whatever they are saying is true. Apart from being led spiritually, Pastor Ben and Pastor Enoch, they have been really amazing to me personally, both spiritually and professionally. They do not only teach you about God, Bible, like they also teach you about life outside there, how you're going to do things. So through their leadership, I was aspiring of opening an animation studio and through their mentorship, I opened it. (laughs) It was challenging, but Pastor Enoch was always there for me to listen to me. And they've been leading me, they've been mentoring me, and right now, um, I, we just had election, I'm now representing, I'm the assistant secretary of animators in all the Kenya, like, I want that election. Wow. <laughs> like, to any youth who's out there, I just want to encourage you to come and join Mwanga. Be a Mwanga Knight, this is, a, is an army, all of these people are great people, and with uh, our great leadership team, they yeah. and you will achieve your desires. Thank you so much. A round of applause. Thank you, guys. I think it will be a disservice to also not give Pastor Enoch an opportunity who we started Mwanga with. Please, Pastor Enoch, real quick, real quick, real quick. I keep telling you Mwanga is international. Mwanga visa kuja Mwanga. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus, somebody. Um, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Ben and thank you to Pastor George for the opportunity to have served in Wanga. And you guys can see the amazing things that's happening there, isn't it? So if you have any young person, young at heart, just bring them over there. I'm sure you can see they're in good hands, right? Isn't that amazing? Please, God bless you guys. Round of applause for my brother, Pastor Enoch. Wow, karibuni sana guys. Um, we're going to get straight to the word. We have like 30 minutes to go and I have like 750 points to share with you guys. You guys have your notebooks. <laughs> karibuni. Now, <clears throat> I want to get straight into it. Um, today I want us to talk about uh, risking it all. Risking it all is the sermon title of the sermon today. And this comes from a very interesting uh, parable that we've been learning at Mwanga. We've been learning about uh, gifts and talents. And you know, gifts and talents sometimes to the life, to our lives, sometimes we don't take them so seriously. And maybe it's because of our education system. Our education system sometimes maybe focuses more on education and it suppresses more on the gifts that God has given us. But gifts and talents are very, very important to God. As we're going to look at the, at the parable that we're going to read in Matthew chapter 25, there are some consequences that are associated with you not uh, activating the gifts that God has given you. And there are some blessings that are also connected to the gifts that God has given you. So we are going to read together Matthew chapter 25 verses 14. And yes, from the message version. So let's read it together. It's also like a man going off on an extended trip. He called his servants together and delegated responsibilities. To one, he gave $5,000, to another, 2000 to a third one, 1000 depending on their abilities. Then he left. Right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second did the same. But the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. 
After a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled, settled up, up with, with them. them. The one given $5,000 showed him how he had doubled his investment. His master commended him, good work, You're, you did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant with 2,000 showed how he also had doubled his master's investment. His master commended him, good work, you did your job well, from now on, be my partner. The servant given 1,000 said, master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways, that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, to the last cent. The master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers, where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of this play it safe who won't go out on a limb. Throw him out into utter darkness. Wow, thank you so much, Kaleche. When we, when, when we read this parable, and one of the things that stood out for me was this parable is made up of two groups of people and the title itself comes from the parable uh, in therein. Verses 28 says, um, take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most, and then get rid of this plate safe, who won't go out on a limb, throw him into the utter darkness. So there are group, two groups of people that I want us to look at today, and you need to ask yourself which category which you fall in. So the first person is uh, the people who played safe, and the second category of people are people who risk, who risk it all. So after the service, I want you to do a self-analysis of yourself, of your life, and ask yourself, are you playing safe in any area of your life, or are you risking it all in the areas that God has blessed you with? Now, when you look at the traits of the people who played it safe, who, it's actually one person. When you look at the characteristics of the person who played it safe, or things that we should avoid so that we don't play it safe, number one is that this guy had the least abilities, you know? And it's interesting because verse 15 says, they got bags of gold of investments, each according to their abilities. That means that God blesses you with the gifts and talents or, or, or a vision based on what you can handle. Some, some abilities are born, like you, you're born with some of these abilities, but some abilities you have to develop them yourself, you know? And most of us are limited in our, in our ministry, in our, at our place of work, because we don't improve on anything. In fact, a random question that I was asking at first service, if you look at your life, what are, do you have some abilities that you have developed in the past two years? If you look at your life, two years. So two years from now is uh, 202. Ah, so 2022. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> it's 2022. <laughs> When you look at two years from now, it's 2022. How many new abilities have you picked up along the way? Or what new skills have you acquired as a person? How have you improved yourself, like in terms of value? In terms of where you work? In terms of the gifts that God has given you? And this, is, this determines the assignment that God will give you next, or the blessing that will come next. These things are connected. And we tend to limit ourselves because we, some of us become too comfortable with what we already have. So we end up not sharpening that which God has given us. And later on, as we are going to see, it starts to die off. But there are also people who start to develop new activities along the way. And they end up being very great men of God. You know, there was a time... Uh, so for those who don't know, I am a musician. Sing with my friends, Kinamashmoana, Gavi Royal. <laughs> and... Um, when, when, as years go, went by and I, was, I kept releasing music, I noticed that when I go on stage, a lot of people, or the people want me to perform more music. But now, by the fourth song, I was already nilikuwana hema. Like I was already, like I was running out of breath. And I remember one time when I was praying, you know, I'm telling God, you know, God, I need you to give me Tanzania, I need you to give me Ghana, go further. You know, you look at the map, randomly you just say Angola, Malawi, <laughs> Guinea Bissau, you don't even know these places. I just feel like God is asking me, with what breath? You know? <laughs> like, you don't have the breath to perform all those songs, you know? So for me to trust God to give me bigger platforms, I need to work on myself. 
I gotta work on my vocals. I have to go start doing cardio. So I was watching my brother Gavi because I follow him on Instagram. He runs like 40 kilometers every single day. But I keep telling him that the wicked run when no one is chasing them. You know, that's, that's like my excuse to him why I can't join him. Yeah. <laughs> But Gavi alisema matatu industry haita kula pesa yake he decides he runs a lot and and for me even when you look at him on stage the, the energy that he exudes is a lot you know so then that means that God will trust him with even bigger stages you know because it doesn't make sense for God to give let's say I've not even I've not been rehearsing and all and I'm trusting God to give me 100,000 people let's say in India but the fourth song ni shall collapse so guys are like do we call a doctor or do we pray for him do we do we, do we get a refund so there there are stages that God will not uh God will not let you access until you are, until you work on the abilities that he has given you. So we end up becoming our own hindrances to the things that God has already released, you know? And he's not going to give them to you if you're not going to work on this. When you look at somebody like Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 4 verses 11 to 12, it says So God is telling Moses, I want you to go and talk to Pharaoh and I want you to go and talk to tell him this and that. So Moses is scared. And Moses had a legend. And this is Pharaoh. Pharaoh was mighty. Up to today we still talk about Pharaoh. So I don't know who who we can liken him in the modern world. So Moses was very scared and he he tells God, I don't have the ability to speak well. I don't speak well. Me same same normal. And then uh Exodus 4:11 to 12. You know there are things that I feel like God tells people and I'm trying to imagine even like what's the reaction? It's like an amount be kata apa. I am the one who gives you the words to say. Exodus 4:11 says, God said, Who do you think? Who do you think made the human mouth? Mm-hmm. And who makes some mute, some, some deaf, deaf, some sighted, some, some blind? blind? Isn't it I, God? So get going. I'll be right there with you, with your mouth. I'll be right there to teach you what to say. Wow. Okay? With your mouth. You're the one who has to go and speak. My work is to give you grace. So some of us we're still praying for things that God has already released. He's waiting for you to do that thing, you know? It's like not reading for an exam and then on that day you're telling the Holy Spirit, "Hey, the Holy Spirit doesn't he's not involved with plagiarism and all that stuff. Please leave God's name out of that stuff." Kama ukusoma, haukusoma, you know? So church, my challenge to everyone today is that we really need to work on our abilities. You, you don't understand how much you preach Christ when you do, when you do an excellent work. Even as a, let's say when you're a fundi, or you're a lawyer, or you're a doctor, when your work is excellent, you preach Jesus in such a powerful way without even actually telling them that you're a believer. Because everyone wants to be associated with great stuff, great things, you know? And when you look at this, this um, when you look at this guy who did not multiply anything, it's because he had the list of abilities. He had not developed himself to that category, to that level. Number two, this guy had a low self-esteem. When you look at verses 24, it says that the servant given 1,000 said, Master, I know that you have high standards and you hate careless ways, that you demand the best and you make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you. First of all, who told this guy that he would fail? Like he already believed he could, there was a probability he would fail, you know? And sometimes when we have low self-esteem or when we are, we, we are trying to be woye woye in some departments of our lives, it's like we expect God is going to send an angel and then the angel is going to give you a hug and tell you, maisha Kenya ni ngumu you know, I... This is not how God is going to react. If God has commanded you to do something, if he's given you a gift to activate in your life, the way you is not going to get you anywhere. You have to stand up. The Bible says, and the kingdom suffereth, and the violence shall take it by. The devil is not going to release some of these things to you by you just being a soft way you are just playing it safe. You're being cautious. And the reason most of us have low self-esteem in a lot of areas of our lives is because we think with ourselves. So you think you're the one who is going to make that thing work. Or you think you're the one who's going to sustain that gift or that ministry or that job or that business. So you start shrinking and you start feeling small. And do you know what we call that at Mwanga? Pride. Pride happens when you start thinking that you're the one in charge of stuff. And you know, like, pride is a very bad sin. Pride is like the OG of sins. You know, like, pride looks at immorality like, see, kuzetu, tulishukana angels, you know? 
What is that? <laughs> pride. Pride is not a scene you want to joke with. I mean, if it was there before, it was there even before man, you know? And it still came down with so many angels. So when you start shifting your mindset from about being, it being about you to it being about God, and whatever happens, happens, then now God starts to activate some things in your life. When you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, this is a story from Paul who wrote 75% of the New Testament, and he's saying this in the message version. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big head, I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. What he in fact did was push me to my knees. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that, and then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. And stop it there. This is Paul. So Paul had a limitation in his life. We don't know what it is. Don't know if it was a physical, I think it was a physical deformity, uh, which is interesting because it's like Satan's angel did his best. So it's like God allowed this thing to happen um, to his life. But the part that catch, catches my attention is, my grace is enough, it's all you need. My strength come, comes in its own in your weakness. When you start changing your perspective and you start believing that this is not about you, it's more about God, this is exactly what happens in your life. My grace is enough, it's all you need. My strength comes in its own in your weakness. Like you don't even have to do anything. The way God has structured it is that that strength comes naturally, it comes on its own. So let's not limit ourselves because we have low self-esteem or we are doubting areas that God has called us. And we think that with this way we share attitude, this being soft, that one day God will just uh, tell you, oh, I understand. That's not what he told this guy uh, who did not multiply anything. Number three, this guy was too cautious. Uh, verses 26 to 27 says that the master was furious and the master says that that's a terrible way to live. It is criminal to live like that. He ni? It says that the master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. You know, this is not to tell you guys or to tell even myself that we need to be careless with our lives. No, it just means that we need to be carefree, you know? It means that you do stuff knowing that God is the one who's in charge of tomorrow. It means that you do stuff, you step out of faith, and you do that thing which God has called you. Come and buy and buy. Ka uta trend, Twitter uta trend. Unajua, kwani wata do? Si uta utapashwa kiasi, uta kuwa meme, you know? <laughs> it will be on TikTok, guys will give reviews, or YouTube, or whatever. But not much will happen to you, you know? You need to get to a level with God where you are not too cautious, but you are more of carefree, allowing him to do whatever he wants with your life. When you start doing these things, now you start to tap into a different anointing, and you will see a whole dispensation um, happen in your life. Now, what about some of the traits that were with the guys that risked it all? Because there were these guys who decided, you know what, we're going to take this money, we're going to double it, multiply it, and bring it back to the master. Number one is that these guys were swift. Verse 16 says... Then the master left. Right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. Right off. That means immediately. Matters of the king require haste. When God gives you an idea, you need to activate it almost immediately. Because if you delay, there's somebody else who will activate the same thing. And you'll see it online and you'll feel bad. You'll start being a hater. You'll start criticizing. You'll, uh, you'll be the first one to dislike and all that stuff. But the problem was with you. When God puts something in your heart, you need to be very quick to activate it. You know, when, uh, when we started doing podcasting, I'm also a podcaster for anyone who has doubts. Uh, Jared podcast with my wife. When we started, for the, yeah, Joy Riders. <laughs> when we started off, I started with another podcast called, uh, it was like a low budget Joy Ride. It was called The Psycho Podcast, you know? Now, The Psycho Podcast was like struggles of struggle. Like the sound was. Ukochini, Mina Nawera record na record, record na ka ivi like it was so weird. But I remember at that time there was not much of podcasting happening. Like nobody knew even what this wave was. 
But when we started and later on, we started notice, noticing that Kumbe it's a wave, not just in Kenya, it's a global thing. So for me, I felt like maybe God was talking to me alone, but he was talking to other people as well. It was like an awakening that was happening, it was sprouting all over this, the, the, the world, you know. And today that's part of our job, that's what we do on an 8 to 5. And if we had delayed to do some of these things, then we would have missed out on what God was trying to activate in our lives. So don't take too much time. So what kind of content do you guys want to do? And, and God already told you that this is the kind of stuff that he wants to do. If, 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 if God has given you something, he's given you an idea, stop spending so much time trying to understand it, trying to, to, to poke holes in it. The time to act is now. Another trait of these people who, are, who risked it all is that, number two is that they were very hardworking. Now, another problem that we have as kingdom people is that sometimes we tend not to be so hardworking. And we think we'll replace that with prayers or going for Bible study. Those things are good. But those things will work wonders if now you balance them with something like hard work. You really need to put in the work, whatever area that God has called you. And when you look at people in the Bible, man, these guys were hard workers. When you look at verse 16, this is Matthew, still on the same parable, because that's what we're dissecting. It says that, then he left, right, right off, the first servant went to work. He went to work and doubled his master's investment. When you look at even the life of Jesus, Jesus was such a hard worker, like... I understand why maybe he didn't have like a lot of friends outside the disciples. Like he was so he didn't he was so busy. Jesus was preaching at the mountains. He was preaching at the seashores. He was uh, casting out demons from some people. At the same time, he's still mentoring the disciples. At the same time, he still had to find time for his own personal growth. That's a lot of hard work that's required. So some of us also we don't want to activate these things in our lives. Because we don't want the work that's associated with it. You think you will pray it through. There's nothing like that. Sometimes maybe what you're even praying for, the answer to it is just you putting in the extra hours, putting in the hard work, you know? And when people start seeing what God is doing in your life, it becomes very easy for them to even give God glory. So we have to put in the work. Whatever we are doing, we can't be mediocre. We can't be the guys who at the office we're lagging behind or our work is just so bad. Like that's bad to the kingdom, you know? I know the Bible says that whatever you find to do with your hands, you do it as if you're doing it unto, unto the Lord. So when you're doing that badly, what you're doing is that you're delaying your next assignment or you're slowing it down and you start to miss out on things because, you know, as Pasi says that the spiritual atmosphere, you don't know what lies in the future. You don't know what's in the next season. And maybe your next big break lies in some of, uh, of these things. Number three, a trait that was with the risk takers, the guys who multiplied their money, is that um, these, guys, these guys, risk takers were radical in the vision that gave them. When God gives you something, you have to believe in it like it's the end of the world. Like literally, your life depends on it. You don't go around uh, taking opinions or listening to what this person has to say about it or the, what this other person has to say about it. You have to be radical to the point where your life depends on it. When you look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these guys tell the king, you know, even if our God doesn't save us, we're still not going to bow down for you. Like they were willing to die for that cause. And that's the point you need to get with what God has told you to do or what has given uh, you to activate in your life. There's a famous musician, I don't know if it's Ruben Kigame or Sarakei or I can't remember, but he sang that Kani Kuzama Heri Nizame Nawewe. Kani Hasara Heri Nipate Nawewe. Do you guys know? Is, was it David? Was it Ben Saiko? Ah, I can't tell nowadays. I am too old, you know? <laughs> but, but you gotta get to that place where you're comfortable to, to even die for what God has told you to do. And that's the, that's, that's the thing that these guys had. The risk takers were radical. What are the rewards of risking it all? What happens when you decide to risk it all for God? When you decide to do that thing which God has called you to do? When you decide to activate that gift that God has put in your heart? One reward is that you set up your whole generation. Now, this is not just you and your nuclear family. You give a breakthrough to, the, to your children and to your children's children. 
Proverbs says that, uh, 1322, it says that a good man leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for, up for the righteous. Some generational curses are actually broken by such things. You just have to risk it all for what God has told you. And God will start taking care of your children and their children. And you change the whole course of your whole history. Number two is that you start to experience God at a personal level. You see, people like Moses, the reason why God had trusted them that much is because they had risked a lot. Abraham, for him to become the father of generations... Abraham decided that he's going to leave his home and he's going to go to a far land with his whole family, you know. But eventually, um, God rewards him. And from him, we get like a whole generation of human beings coming from, um, from, from Abraham. Number three is that your reward is eternal. Now, when you're doing things that God has called you, you need to stop looking at them also just based on this life. Yeah, that's, you know, all of us want rewards now, you know, I mean, it's good to have it in the afterlife. But there is also a reward that God has set you even after you die, you know. And this is what Luke, this is the same parable in Luke chapter 19, verses 17. It says that, well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities, you know. And that speaks about the reward that Jesus will have for us once he comes back for the church. So you have to also stop viewing life just based on life now. And you also look at uh, the future. Number four is that you get to be a part of God's grand plan. You know, when you look at the disciples when God was calling them. And it's, it's, it's weird how Jesus was calling disciples. Eh? One is a fisherman, another one is a tax collector. Another one is working at a different place. If you look at it in the modern day, like if Jesus was just to come now, comes to a doctor, hey, watch a my temperature, just follow me. He goes like, let's say to an Uber driver, you know, now the Uber driver has to cut short his trip. Like, madam, when he pay to one star, five star, four binguni, or he goes to a chef, or goes to a teacher, or to politicians, because Jesus went to the tax collectors who are regarded very, very corrupt. The tax collectors were not uh, like such good people. They didn't have the cleanest track record in their society. But you get to be in a grand plan, in, in a part of God's grand plan. You see, when you do things, you tend to think you're just doing them for now or for you. But how God has looked at it is that it's connected with various things. And this is not just in your area, it's across the world. When you look at, for example, when uh, God was telling Pastor George, uh, maybe it's time for you to start prayers, you know. Maybe he was talking to somebody else on the south, at South Africa. Maybe talking to somebody else in the north, another person in the west. And so when you become that person, for example, if Pastor George didn't hit the call, 